Uh, so we're here for another watercolor video and just like we talked about in our last one, we're doing a series that tells a little bit of a story. So we wanted to do the next step in the progression of our story, which is our little cat gets very excited to take a swim because he's heard there are fish in the ocean. And who would not be excited about that if your diet consisted mainly of fish? Uh, so we're, we're gonna do this guy today and we've got the same material set up for watercolor and we're going to go over them a little bit more in depth than I can show you in, uh, in, the, in the overhead, whatever that's called, in that, that close-up look. And we'll go through that. We will look at these with the same kind of paper, same kind of watercolor paper, and nothing has really changed except we're gonna progress a little bit in our story. We really hope that you've been enjoy these as much as we are, and I can't wait to show you how to walk through this one. Thanks, guys. Okay, all right, so we're gonna do this next little step where our little smudge cat here is jumping into the water. He's so excited. Uh, so we're gonna lay this out in this very similar fashion that we did the last one. I'm just gonna lay water in all over the paper. I've taped it down this time. Uh, we did find some tape, though it's not the best of tape. We do recommend a, a masking tape or a painter's tape, not the invisible tape, but it will work in a pinch. We're gonna do this. So we're really excited about uh, doing lots of different things here with you guys on this channel. We've really got a lot of um, we have a lot of things that interest us and we hope that this will give you a chance to explore some art that you've maybe never been exposed to before and that you can do at home and have a good time doing. And we know that uh, things can be a little bit stressful right now, but we would just want you to, to relax a little bit with us as we relax a little bit with all of you. So we really appreciate that y'all come in and that you, you watch this, these videos and that you interact with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, so now that I've gotten some blue here, I'm just gonna give the sky a little bit of blue at the top. A little bit of that really bright day. It's a little more midday, not quite so morning anymore, so no yellow up there. And so you can see kind of like, this is, this is wet and wet, and if you weren't stopping in between your layers, this is what you would do with all the color that you lay down. So this is a really good example of what happens when you, when you work wet and wet. So if I were to lay another color in here like red right now, it would run all over the place. Which sometimes can be a really neat effect. Okay, so I think, I think that's pretty good. And actually, I think I've come down a little too low. So I'm gonna show you a, a technique that I like to do when I, I edit what I'm doing. And since the paper is so wet, if I have a little napkin here, I can come in and just kind of blot it into this and it lifts away quite a bit of that pigment, which is a benefit of working wet and wet. If this paper was dry and I tried to do this, it would not take up nearly as much of that color. So that's a little bit of a saving grace from working wet and wet. But you can get some really neat effects by dabbing off of wet paper with pigment on it. So if you take something like newsprint or a magazine page that you've crumpled up, you can touch it and it'll make textures. So we'll probably look at that at some point too, just so you can kind of see how that progresses. Okay, so we're gonna come down a little farther, like make another horizon line here. Actually, I wanna bring it up a little bit farther. Okay, good. As you can see, in our, our, it's probably like the top third of the page is the sky and the rest is all underneath, is all the sand and everything else. So we're gonna work this color in. And since I've given this some perspective, all of my sand color is gonna be at a little bit of an angle. I wanna be sure that we get that line in. And one of the best things, in my opinion, about watercolor is that it's so soft and it's so versatile. You can do different techniques with it and make it look like different things, but I think it really shines the most doing water and doing um, things that are soft and lit very gently. I, I feel like that's one of its its strengths. You can do lots of things with watercolor. You can you can paint with them in such a bold way that it's almost like acrylic. 
and that's phenomenal which is also a really fun way to work on it it really is just up to you how you feel like you want to to paint and how you want to render your colors um, so I'm giving this just a little bit more of this kind of rusty color in here give it a little more intensity see I'm working really loosely nothing here is um, planned or plotted out outside of just the general composition and doesn't need to be you don't have to overthink or overwork something and a lot of times something that's done simply ends up being a lot better than something that you just keep touching and you keep touching and you keep touching because then it ends up it loses a little bit of the, the innocence of the idea that you brought to it. So don't ever feel like you have to keep working at something if you don't want to. If you feel like you're happy with it, just stop where you are. Nothing can, uh, nothing can stop you from coming back and looking at it again if you want to. So we just keep mixing these colors. I'm just getting the right kind of greenish blue color that I want here. And we're gonna start laying in the water right back here. See how light this color is? I don't want to overdo anything because actually this is going to come up over the sand just a little bit with these little swirly lines because I want to make it look like the wave is kind of coming up over the shore. Just make it really loose. I'll lay in just a little more pigment because it's so wet. Just might as well at this point. And so it comes up just a little bit over the horizon back here because that that's, water is wrapping around. And since the earth is curved, it kind of has a little bit of that feeling off in the distance. It doesn't have to be anything for too profound back in there. Okay, so here's my basic layout for the colors, I think. I'm going to give it just a little bit right there. And I'm going to go ahead and pause, and I'm going to dry this right quick, and then we'll come back and lay in some more intense color, okay? Okay, so we're dry, and I wanted to talk about one thing right quick. Is like, how well do you know if your paper is dry if you were working really wet and wet without touching it? Because I, I had a little fun part up here where I touched my paper and the pigment wasn't dry. And so it left my fingerprints in the painting, which, you know, is very unique and wonderful. But if you don't want to touch like, physically your paper, is that the shine from the water begins to go completely flat. So if you kind of look at it from an angle, you'll be able to see the water or the, the water is dried up off the paper. The paper has gone back to being matte. So that's, that's a handy tool if you don't want to put your fingers in it. Um, I'm constantly covered in color anyway, so why not touch it? So that's just my opinion. Okay, so we're gonna lay in a little bit more color up here in the sky. Just a little more of that blue. Okay, now we're gonna work on this ocean water some more. And so the color that I started off with was this really soft teal. I'm adding some blue back into and I'm not diluting it. I'm going to start back here on the horizon line. You can see how much more bright and pigmented that is. I'm going to squeeze my brush and give it a little more water. And now I'm going to start feeding it out. Do the same thing again. And I'm working in kind of I'm going to start working in these, these wave kind of shapes that follow the line of where the shore is going to meet the wave. So I kind of want it to have an organic, well, wavish, watery kind of texture. So I'm not going to do any straight lines if I can help it. Um, and the wonderful thing about working in transparent layers with watercolor is that it, it allows you to make these highlights and lowlights that water kind of provides without having to work too hard for it. I said, I don't know about anybody else, but I have a really hard time working in realism. So the more impressionistic it can be for me, the better. I highly, highly approve of, that's close enough and move on. Um, okay, so I'm gonna work on a little bit more dark pigment here. Yeah, so now we're gonna start really bleeding some of these oceany colors back in here. And again, it doesn't have to look like anything in particular. 
Um, you can just kind of give it the impression of water and people will understand when you view it. Um, and if they don't, you can explain it and that's half the fun too because you gotta tell people about your, if you're writing a story, you might as well tell someone about it. You're gonna have to explain it. So there's some of that. Just some very soft. I'm adding some extra water here to dilute it just a little more. You can see I'm making it look really, really textured in terms of the water. Okay, so I want a little bit more dark back farther away. So I'm going to lay in even more back here. And see, if this wasn't taped to the table and it was in my little journal, right now I would be turning the journal to fit where my hand would flow. But since we don't have it done that way right now, that's totally fine. I'm just gonna change the angle that my hand is at. Whenever you paint or you draw, find a position that is comfortable for you and use that. Um, you don't wanna ever feel like you're straining your hands or your arms to do something um, I mean, I guess unless you're doing something like woodworking or something and then you have to, but it, this is supposed to be fun and you don't want to make yourself sore or stiff. Okay, so that's good for the water right now. I'm gonna wash out my brush right quick. I'm just gonna start a little bit more on the sand and give it a little bit more definition and then we'll move over and give it another good dry and we'll do the little kitty cat. So let's, let's just fix some of those little edges. So now the sand. I really love using these like ochre colors and some yellow. Just kind of soften that up quite a bit. Ooh, my, got my napkin here. You can see as I squeeze, it's actually let me clean my brush a little bit. Okay, so there's some. So you can see there's this color complement again. So here's that orange color and here's this teal color and how bright it makes both of them look. That's what you're using complements for um, and it's what it's really best at. It, it really helps make, um, really just helps make the, the colors stand out naturally without having to do a whole lot of forcing, which I think is really great. And I'm a, fa a huge fan of really bright colors. So, it just works in my advantage, to my advantage. Okay, really liking this. Gives it some depth. Give it just a little bit more of this rusty color. Okay, all right, so I think I'm good right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pause and dry this and then we'll move on to our little details on our cat, okay? Okay, so we're back and we're all dry now. And I'm gonna play with uh, we're gonna put our little cat in here in just a second and we're gonna do some little details. But I was seeing how kind of uniformly toned the water ended up being and I wanna add a little bit more depth of that blue color like we have up here. So I'm just gonna go back in and just drop some more of that blue in. I'm just working very transparently. It's the beauty of watercolor. It's that you can go back in play and play and adjust. So we're going to put some more down here. Okay. Ooh, that's the sound of another video coming. We're so excited. <laughs> Yay! Um, so this is a working studio. We, we've meant to mention that to you guys before. Uh, that while you hear, you may hear sounds in the background. We're always working, and we've always got people in and out. So 
you know, don't be alarmed if you hear weird stuff. We've got stuff going on all the time. Okay, so we've got this. Now let's add in our little cat. So he is so excited to see these fish. He's just jumping into the water. So I wanna do a little oval that is sort of over the beach, but not. He's gonna kinda angle up a little bit cause he is jumping big. So he's got his feet out behind him here. Cute little feet. And his tail is angled back. He is pouncing. He's got the big pounce going on and his little ear. And I just love his little face, so I just make him looking at the camera all the time. So just looking at us. His little mouth. Wide open and excited. His little toe beans. And his one little foot out this way. His other little foot down this way over the water. He is going for those fishies. Okay, just gonna refine that in a little bit. Okay, here. All right, so now that I've laid that really basic thing, is that he's gonna have some little lines. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and do this with a micron pen. This one is a micron, it's a Prigma, a Pigma, excuse me, and it's a three size. Uh, these are great, they're in waterproof and they're archival ink, they're by Sakura Color Company. They, I have used these for years and I love these so much. Um, the, the ink is super black and it is wonderful. So we're gonna go ahead and, and get this little kitty cat laid in here. So we're just gonna start doing his little eyeballs. always using my reference. The reference is my little guide to kind of help me know where I'm headed. It's not the Bible. <laughs> you don't follow it letter for letter. Uh, so don't feel like you have to, but it's always a good idea to have some form of reference, whether it's a photo or it's another piece of art. Oh, and then look at here. I just stuck my hand in that water that I hadn't finished, but that's okay. It's fine. It's maybe it's choppy back here. The, the water is rough back on that side of the photo or the picture, so that's okay. So we are going to make his little mouth very open and excited, just like that. And we're gonna give his little eyes some definition. His big buggy eyes, he is wired to get those fishes. So he's gonna cover in his ears here, color in his ears. And actually, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach back here behind me. And we did this watercolor earlier based off of the other picture that we had. And I want the kitties to look fairly similar, so I'm just gonna look at both of them while I'm at it. So now we have multiple references, isn't that fun? It's starting to look like my desk at home. All right, there's that. Big, big eye vials. Okay. So now we're gonna work on his feet. And there's his little toes. And look, he's, he's so excited he's gonna put his little claws out. Cause he wants to catch those fish. And why does he need to catch the fish? Who knows, maybe he's hungry. Maybe he wants a fish friend. Maybe he thinks the fish has got money or is hoarding toilet paper. You know, it's whatever you need to know for your little story. You tell the story however you think it needs to go. But I think I might be trying to fish right now if I thought the fish were hoarding toilet paper. Um, so here we go. So here's his little legs. We're gonna give those nice dark definitions. You can really see them. Right back there, there's his little back feet. His little toes. Really, really simple. Really sketchy, doesn't need to be anything more than that. It's all about having fun, and if you're gonna tell a story, you might as well make it something that you can tell. It doesn't have to look like anybody else's, it doesn't have to sound like anybody else's, and the story doesn't have to be anybody else's. It's whatever you come up with. And don't let anybody tell you that your story isn't worth telling. I recommend 100% that if you want to try and tell a story with art, please do it. Um, 
we would love to see it. If you come up with something and this little video has inspired you to do so, let us know. We'd love to see that. So we've gotten his little feet and his legs. Oh, he needs little claws on his back feet too because he's using those feet. Okay, now we're gonna do his body just like we did the other. We're gonna do some really loose scribbling and we'll, we'll go through that texture together. So I'm gonna start back here on his back with big open squiggles. Big open squiggles. And actually, Lori and I were just talking about it a few minutes ago while we were off camera. The One of the things that inspired me about this piece in particular was something I did as a child, and that's making thumbprint animals. And uh, if you've ever seen them, it's where someone sticks their thumb in ink and then puts it on the paper and then they draw on top of them. I remember reading a book as a young child that had a zoo made up, it seems like, that way. I'll have to see if we still have that book uh, and, and show it to you. But when I saw an example of this the other day in a magazine, it spurred this idea of just using really simple shapes and sketches to make art. And this is what kind of inspired this little scribble cat, which I find to be adorable. And here we go, some tighter loops around his face so we can lay in those features and he, his little eyes really stand out. Okay, so we're gonna come in nice and tight with little circles around his face and eyes. Just really loopy, loopy. Doesn't have to be careful outside of staying away from his eyes as much as possible, but that's the most careful we have to be. He is just a squiggly boy. I think one of my favorite things to do with storytelling is say something about life and how we, we go through it. And you have to remember the things that are, that are positive. You have to remember the things that are good memories and you keep those fresh so that you can go back to them and revisit them all the time. There's plenty of bad things to think about in the world and life can be kind of scary at times. So if you keep those good memories up front by telling stories with them, you can always have a place to go back to that makes it more secure and a little bit more uh, manageable because you have those things at the ready. So here we go, more loops, 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 loops. loops. Okay, so he's feeling pretty textured in. I like that quite a bit. And now I'm gonna go back in. And you say, Becca, but I can see the, the sand and the, the ocean through his, his scribblies. That's okay, we'll, we'll lay some more solid in there. But even if we left it in, you see where he is. He's a big black dot in here. So now we'll do his tail and we're gonna do it the same way with the loops. So we're just gonna start with a center point running up his tail. See how I have the sketched in line? And we're just gonna follow that with our loops all the way up and all the way back down and the other side and the other side lots and lots of layering And yeah, it takes a little bit of time to get this kind of layering in, but I really love the way that the result looks. And that's something that, that everybody who does art knows after a certain point is yes, it is time consuming. It does take a little while to get sometimes where you want to go. It can be fast and simple, or it can be delicate and take a lot of, uh, a lot of meticulous work. But in, in any case, in either case, the results are wonderful. And as long as you love the results, that's all that matters, whether it takes you 10 days or it takes you 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm really happy with how our little cat has laid in. Let's put the color in behind him and we'll give him a couple little details and then we will be good for this part of the story. So here we are just laying in that gray, a little bit more of that gray, just very loose. And see, it kind of covers up that background and behind him a little bit, so he's not so transparent. But even if you can see it still, that's all right. And 
nothing has to be perfect. And it's not going to be. So the sooner that we understand that art is not perfect and it doesn't have to be, the better. And that's a good time. It makes it more fun, in my opinion. I used to have a hard time with wanting to make everything look just, just right. And it would take forever. And then if it didn't turn out the way I liked it, I was very upset. And now, now I just have fun with art. It makes my life a lot better. So there's some of that. Just very loose. Okay. All right, so there's that. Oh, but look, we forgot to give him whiskers. So we gotta give him one of his little squiggly whiskers. Some little squiggly whiskers on this side that you can't really see him because of the squiggles he's in. All right, so there's only one thing left that I'd like to do. So we're gonna give him his horizon line. So that's up here. And look, that's not even a straight line. That's okay, I don't care. My brush wasn't clean. Okay, so look at that. Okay, all right. So let's do the last little thing. And I wanna give him some little seashells here on the beach just so that he's, it just adds a little more interest to the picture. So I'm gonna pick this purple color. This purple's here. And see, we talked about compliments before where the yellow, the sand, well now I'm gonna put purple shells down and you're gonna really see them stand out. So we're gonna do a little whoop shape. Whoop, 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 whoop. And then the little back part here. One more pigment, drop that in, just for a little bit of interest, this color too. Okay, and now on this one, we're gonna do a red shell. This one is gonna be, let's see, I wanna do, I wanna do a long shell, a conch style shell. So it goes whoop, whoop, whoop. And then, oops, look at that. Now it's gonna be a fat shell because I got so much water on my brush. There we go. Okay, so here's another one of those opportunities to use your napkin. There's a lot of water in that little puddle, so we're just gonna touch that napkin into that and lift a little bit of that water away. Okay. Okay. All right, y'all. So I think this one is done. I really enjoy this. I may add a little bit more detail into these shells when it's dry. But until then, I think we're good. And we're gonna move on to the next set of uh, pictures with the third one, which is him in the ocean. And when we're done with that, uh, we will see how our little story progresses. And I think we are all gonna enjoy the results. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day.